Hi everyone, this is Ismael, and I would like to cover today uh, the second part really to the second video that we shot regarding um, what you need to know to be an art teacher. And in the first video we really covered a number of different things from uh, having passion for art, then finding a school uh, to become an art educator, and then some of the parts to, or some of the experiences you would have uh, when you get there. And in this video, I really want to cover some of the things I wasn't able to cover in the first video. And hopefully it won't be as long as the first video, which was about a half hour. And if you haven't seen it, please see it. And it'll make sense uh, once you see this video. And one of the things that you will inevitably experience is that in any art education program that you're in, you will have to do a year, mostly, uh, in, the, in the state of New York, I believe it's about a year, and a number of hours of observations. And what that means is that you're going to uh, find a school, either elementary, middle school, high school, in your first semester of that year, um, to observe a seasoned teacher teach art. Um, you will probably, most people will do elementary their first semester, and then their second year they'll either choose middle school or high school. Um, I did all three, um, uh, so my second year I did middle school and high school observations. Uh, and you may have to do the same, it really depends on the program uh, that you're in and what are the state requirements uh, where you live. Because every state really has a different take on what you need to be a certified teacher uh, for that state, right? So, you're going to observe. And what does that entail? That entails really looking at everything from how the teacher functions in their classroom, how do they teach their lesson, uh, to how they greet their students. You know, every aspect is important. Um, you have to start from the beginning. You know, you sit there, you get to know your teacher, and uh, you sit as a student in the back usually, and you watch. Now some classes, um, the teacher, the art teacher there may allow you to walk around, uh, talk to the students, uh, uh, converse with them, interact with them, engage what, with what they're doing. Um, some others maybe not so. It really depends on the teachers, how, they, how comfortable they feel with you <laughs> being in a classroom. And you got to understand also the kids are going to also be curious. You know, and they're going to wonder, well, what, who's this person, you know, that we've never seen before in your classroom? What are they doing, you know? But um, after, I would say, the first two, what, you know, first two weeks of going to a school and doing that, the kids, you know, if you're seeing the same class or, you know, depending on, you know, how comfortable they feel, they usually ignore you, <laughs> which is a good thing because you really want to be there to see it naturally evolve. How does the class naturally evolve? And your teacher will be really your teacher uh, as far as seeing what um, pedagogical skills that teacher may have, what type of system, what type of techniques, how do they, uh, you know, uh, bring forth their lesson and uh, and, ba and also how, how much time they allot to certain things. For instance, uh, if you observe a class that in the beginning, uh, you're there at the beginning of a unit, which means the teacher's pr you know, introducing a new lesson for a new project. Um, how long does it take from introducing that project until the kids start to work on something? And usually, in the beginning of every project, it's more about learning the materials and learning the particular techniques to handle a certain material. Especially if you're with older children, you know, uh, learning how to use a colored pencil, you know, uh, and, and, and drawing pencils in general, uh, 
as artists, we know that we don't use them like if we were writing. We hold them differently. We sharpen them differently. Um, so every little aspect to that, you know, how did they conduct that? Uh, you know, again, the, the techniques of how to manage paint if, if, if the exercise at that point is to develop some type of painting skill, you know, handling materials, is very crucial in terms of, and the tools to handle those materials, like a brush and a pencil, um, are important because um, you'll find that a lot of students have never held a paintbrush before. You know, and, we're, and I'm talking about kids in later a a stages, like let's say, fourth or fifth grade student that maybe didn't have art, you know, uh, in their first, second, or third year of school. Um, and then you'll, you know, if you're in a uh, middle school setting or in a high school setting, you may also get students who may not have had a good art education. And you're going to have to start from the beginning. So you want to see from that teacher that you're observing how do they deal with those issues? And you may not see it, unfortunately, but you know, doing between classes or doing their prep time, have questions. Have questions for your observer, uh, you know, for your uh, for the teacher that you're observing, and um, and usually a good uh, you know cooperating teacher in that sense uh, will really be open about it and tell you, well, these are this is what I do and. This is what I may struggle with sometimes with certain groups of kids, because not every class is the same, obviously, and kids are very uh, rambunctious at times. And you want to also look, which I, I think I need to also mention, is their class management skills. And, and that's a topic that we really need to do a whole video about, because class management is crucial. And unfortunately, when you go to college, no matter if you're getting a BA, an MA, or even a PhD in art education and in any art field, there is no course for class management. And I always, you know, it's funny, I've had discussions with other uh, people in education from all walks of life and all different, you know, disciplines. Uh, and that's always been something that we wonder about, you know, uh, among ourselves why don't they have a course just dedicated to class management? It's crucial. And unfortunately, you learn the hard way. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you get a job at a school, you go in, and, you know, you're not really taught. You know, um, sometimes you'll have a good principal or uh, a good system in a school where they take new teachers and kind of get them prepped before they start their school year and if class management is an issue it's something you could address before you start teaching but really you need to think about that early and I mean right when you're observing that year that you're doing obs observations that's when you really need to really get a hold of how do you manage a class of let's say 15 kids compared to 30 kids in some cases, you may even have up to 40 kids in a classroom. It's happened. I'm not saying that's the typical, that's usually an exception, not the rule. Uh, most classes range from, you know, 28, maybe, I, I shouldn't go, 25 to 30 students in a class. Uh, especially if it's an overcrowded situation, you may get up to 35 to 40 kids. And I've seen it, you know, and not in every case. And, of course, that's unusual, but it's happened, you know. And you always have to be prepared for anything in education. Remember, as a teacher, you need to be as flexible and as creative as possible. So that's not, uh, how to say, a talent. That's a skill. And it's a skill that you have to hone in. And the best way to hone in is talk to seasoned teachers who um, you trust, who are forthright in their, in their ideas and, and, and willing to share with you and just, you know, really work on that and um, I think your teaching experience will be better. Now, after your year of observation, you're going to experience something called student teaching. 
Now, that's a year, uh, and in the state of New York, you have to at least have two semesters, and it's usually called practicum, which is another word for practice. And when you're doing your student teaching, you should be having also a, a weekly uh, interaction with your professor uh, who's mentoring or guiding or teaching uh, a number of other students in a cohort or class of some kind, right? So besides teaching during the day, uh, you're going to be also um, going to class at night. And it's usually once a week because you're going to be working hard during that first year of student teaching. Now, does that mean you have to teach every day? It really depends on a lot of variables. One, your schedule, uh, which you're going to have to really make changes for. Unfortunately, it's very difficult, and I wish there was a better way. But my experience, and I work full time, um, I had to uh, take days out of my vacation and I had to, uh, you know, just really make sacrifices uh, in my own personal life so I could do the student teaching. And I, and I did it. It was hard, it was challenging, it was a real struggle. But once you get it done, it's done. Now, what happens when you're student teaching? Well, usually you'll be going to a school, again, it could be elementary, middle school, or high school. I know in New York, uh, you have to do elementary. That's one of the um, requirements because most degrees are K through 12. They're more flexible and in your second semester you can um, uh, do, you could choose actually, middle school or high school. So, and whatever your preference is and whatever, wherever you feel you excel the best is usually where you know, like if you really like working with high school students, chances are that that's where you want to gear your energies in terms of becoming an art teacher. When you get your degree and you're certified, you want to go into a high school. If you feel uh, that way about middle school, the same thing, elementary, the same thing. Now, this is what you need to be prepared for. When you become uh, a student teacher, uh, you need to be uh, working with a cooperating teacher and that cooperating teacher should be someone that is opening their classroom to you which that's basically what they're doing but they're allowing you also to teach one to three units in their class now I say it that way usually there's a requirement about I think at least in New York State that, you know you have to teach at least uh, two to three uh, units uh, uh, projects per semester and it's really challenging because a unit as, as if you don't know already what it is a unit is a a project from beginning to end and that will that will include uh, a lot of uh, particulars like for instance uh, if you're going to teach uh, a student, uh, uh, if you're going to teach painting, let's say, you're going to teach a uh, landscape. So what goes into a landscape, you know? So you have to start everything from the whole idea of teaching perspective, from teaching line work. Uh, if they're doing brush work, like later, you have to, that could be a class in itself. So a lot of the technical aspects to get them to do a landscape so you have to break those lessons down to the final project. So let's say a project like a, uh, a watercolor landscape, let's say, or a cityscape if you live in the city, uh, would take five lessons. You need to figure that out, right? What's going to be taught in those five lessons? Uh, what, um, how, long will it, how long will the kids work on their project to, to, their, to its completion? Now... <clears throat> That may vary, obviously, and uh, your lesson plans, depending on your professor, some professors feel that your lesson plan should be like a script. Uh, real world experience has taught me it can be like a script, but you're not going to always, it's not always going to be perfect. You're going to have to be flexible because, again, remember, when you're actually teaching, some things may come up 
during your lesson that will change, that need to be changed. And you're going to have to go back to that lesson and say, you know what, that didn't work. Uh, I'm going to, you know, fix that. And then figure it out for the next lesson how you would incorporate something that, let's say, uh, maybe a, a vocabulary it could have been um, uh, the way you phrased uh, a number of different concepts and the kids didn't just get, didn't get it. Or the exercise they were doing, maybe they were doing gradation. You know, so they're doing light to dark and uh, using, a, let's say, chalk, right, on black paper uh, to, to understand how they can get darks and lights if they're doing a still life. Uh, you know, there, there's always going to be a lot of um, ideas that may not work, and there's going to be ideas that will and concepts that will. This is why the cooperating teacher becomes a very important part of your own training in the sense that your lessons before you teach them need to go by that particular uh, teacher. Of course, your professor, when you go see them every week or so, uh, will be talking to you about your lesson. What your lesson plan should look like, what are the different um, elements that need to be there, and um, what will make it work or not work. Now, <clears throat> in terms of subject for your lessons, that's going to vary a lot. So, just like I said in the first video about taking pictures, finding out about different projects and so on, it's important to understand that curriculum is a, another word and a very important word that you need to be familiar with. And the school that your student teaching at may have a curriculum. And that's basically that they already have a set lessons projects for that particular grade group. You know, so let's say if it's sixth grade, they have a number of lessons throughout the year that they expect the teacher to teach. Right? And it may it may flow with you know um, the principles of design, and they want the kids to learn certain particular elements of that. So the projects are geared for that, right? So you may not have a lot of freedom in terms of coming up with something yourself. That doesn't mean it can't be incorporated, but you really have to understand also that if it's a school that already has kind of, and the, and the, the art teachers kind of set things up where this is what they learn, then after that they learn this, then this, you know, A, B, C, D type of thing. <coughs> you may have to work with that and your professor will have to understand that too because when they come because they will come to do observations so when you're te when you start teaching your professor will come at least two to three times to see you teach and then critique you on your strengths and weaknesses it's not an easy time because not only are you writing lessons not only are you teaching not only are you getting to know the kids that you're working with but you need to be taking notes and you need to be either mental or or written notes on everything that you're doing now i need to add all everything else that goes into it you're going to have to record when you're teaching so you need to have a camera and you need to be ready to record and i advise you get a good camera with a good sound and and sound is really important because if you don't have a good sound on your camera, you're going to have a real problem. But you need a, a camera that's not too big, but just right, and something handheld, uh, that you can put prop on a tripod or whatever, or in a bookshelf where the kids don't really see it, and you need to record your lessons. Uh, I would also advise record your cooperating teacher, too. If they're seasoned and they're really good, try to, you know, see, you know, this way you can go home and really study how do they do that? You know, oh, I see her, the way she pronounced this word and how she moved around the, the room or how he, um, uh, you know, answered this question. You know, you want to see the, all the different um, techniques and uh, pedagogical uh, elements that your teacher, your cooperating teacher is using because that's going to help you. Um, the best teacher is the classroom. I mean, you can learn all the theory, 
all the concepts about art education that you want. But if you're going to be an art teacher, you have to really work hard. And that means you, you need to go to a classroom, you need to visit art teachers, and you need to teach and practice. And it's not easy. I, I for one, my own experience, it was very challenging. But once you are doing it often, and you will make mistakes. And you know, let me just add one more thing. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up if you make mistakes. I know there are professors that are kind of cruel and really just beat the heck out of their uh, out of their students when they're trying, you know, art teachers. As art teachers, we need to support each other. And, you know, you may have a professor who's guiding you through your stuff that may not be all that pleasant, <laughs> and I'm saying it lightly, uh, in their approach to guiding you. But chances are that person's very seasoned, knows their stuff. Maybe they may not be in tune with what's going on now because most professors that are um, teaching um, art teachers are usually retired. And by the time they're teaching, things have changed. And you're going to learn a lot about rubrics and standards and, you know, the principal's requirement for what he wants to see when he goes to your classroom, uh, chancellor's rules. I mean, there's a lot of information. So that year of student teaching, you're really going to concentrate on teaching and writing your lessons but try to take time to really uh, develop a good relationship with your cooperating teacher. Learn as much as you can from not only the cooperating teacher, but also your professor and other colleagues. And talk to your classmates uh, who are teaching in other schools. And, and you know, and share. It's, I think it's crucial. Share. And, you know, I made it a habit to stay connected with all my colleagues in my, uh, my, in my journey uh, in college when I was becoming an art teacher. And um, I still stay in touch with many of them. And every time I have a question about how, how you know, I need a lesson idea. <laughs> I need a lesson plan. Um, I send out an email. Now, some don't you know, reply, and some do, and some actually send me information and stuff. So we as art teachers really need to help each other, and we should really um, try to uh, just support one another. Remember, we're a rare breed. I really believe that. You know, we're, no one's more special than the art teacher, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to <laughs> public schools, and because that's where creativity is, man. And I say that for not only art teachers, visual art teachers, but for all those who do the arts, you know, or for those who do music, for those who do theater, and uh, if I'm missing anything, <laughs> uh, that too, you know, because I think it's just, um, in my view, that's where the innovation comes. Helping students think outside the box is an amazing thing. And for me, it, it, it forces me to think out of the box, it, it challenges me, it makes me want to do art more, and that's how you should feel about teaching art, you know. Uh, I'm an artist first before I'm a teacher, uh, and I always go that way because when I think as an artist, then my ideas are flowing, and I know, and I realize, you know what, I'm going to share now with my students what I've learned. And if there's something that I'm not good at, and believe me, uh, there's a lot that I'm not good at, but I'm willing to learn, you know. And it's all about practice, too, as an art teacher, you know. Your first year will be tough. It's always tough. But you know what? If you get into a good school with a supportive, supportive principal and a supportive staff, uh, you'll do fine. And just keep working hard. Um, and let me see if there's anything else I left out. Well, the last thing I'll say in this video is that um, while you are going through school, 
taking your classes, doing your observations, doing student teaching, and then, you know, uh, whatever, you'll have to do a thesis, most, uh, especially with masters, uh, you definitely will have to do a thesis. Uh, one day I'll do an episode on my thesis and I'll share it with you. Um, but once that's kind of done, um, remember that you're leading to certification and every state wants their teachers to be certified, obviously. So what I suggest is if you have tests, like I know there's a content specialty test that you, I know in the state of New York, there's a number of tests we have to take and there's workshops you have to take like bullying workshops and things like that to really help you get ready to become a teacher. Uh, try to take all those tests and those workshops while you're going through um, your uh, education. Because if you don't do them and you wait till the end, uh, right when you're getting your degree, you have to do them. Uh, for any principal to hire you, uh, they really want to look at your record that you're, you're, you don't only have your degree, but you have your certification requirements done. And stay up to date with that. They sometimes they may change a little every so you know. Usually the the union, uh, this, uh, if you're in a union, uh, they'll let you know. If not, uh, you have to find out from other people in your school. And usually the school will tell you also. You know, there's a, a certain requirement. You need to do this. You need to do that to stay certified, and so on. So, that's part two. I hope I covered as much as I, uh, as I could in these two videos as far as what you would need to know and experience uh, as an art teacher or becoming an art teacher uh, when you're in college. And when you get that degree, hold it tight, you finally made it, you did it, now the real work begins and that is to go and create art um, with you know, create art for yourself so that you can share with your students and, you know, immerse yourself. There's a lot of great resources I mentioned in the first video. And I did make one error, which was I mentioned this organization, which is the National Educate, uh, sorry, the National Art Education Association. And I mispronounced it and I said the National uh, Educators uh, uh, or Art Educators Association. So I'm making a correction. I actually wore a t-shirt <laughs> just for that purpose so you can see. So it's the National Art, Te uh, Art Education um, Association and they're a wonderful organization. Another wonderful uh, organization is the Council for the Arts. Uh, I'm going to put the links below so you can see them. And I also mentioned um, a couple, uh, well, join your local um, uh, art associations. Usually every state and city has one that deals with art education. Um, and I will put those links below too. And if you can, sponsor this channel through Patreon. And we have an account with them and the link is below. So thank you so much uh, for visiting again. And until the next episode, art can change the world. So I'll see you then. Take care.